My name is Jack. I'm in the eighth grade at Pine Hill Waldorf School. And today, I want to tell you about my eighth grade science fair project. This year, I will be studying properties of gases. And part of my project will be constructing, launching, and retrieving a weather balloon. Here's what you need for the project. One weather balloon. It's actually a giant balloon that will be filled with helium. It will inflate to about eight to 10 feet diameter, which is enough to lift two to three pounds of equipment, my launch vehicle, up to an altitude of over 100,000 feet, which is almost 20 miles above the earth. As the balloon rises into the air, it will gradually expand, growing to a diameter of 20 feet before exploding and falling back to earth from the edge of space. Luckily, it will have a parachute to slow the descent. The entire journey up and down should take from two to two and a half hours. This is my launch vehicle, which will be attached to the balloon. It's a plain old styrofoam box in which I will put this camera. This is a GoPro camera and it will take a picture every 10 seconds. I will also put this GPS. This will allow me to track where the balloon is and hopefully find it where, when it lands. I will also take some flags, kind of like a kite tail, and this beeper, which will make it easier to find, especially if it lands in the forest. I need to, I need to wrap these hand warmers around the camera and the GPS because the temperature, 20 miles up, will be negative 40 to negative 50 degrees Celsius. Um, and the hand warmers will prevent the batteries from freezing and malfunctioning. I will also be taking this Kestrel, which is a, mo uh, which is a miniature weather station. It will record temperature, um, air pressure, altitude, and a whole bunch of other stuff. The manufacturers say that it is designed to operate in negative 40 degree temperatures, so we'll see. I'll also include a note asking anyone who finds it to call or email me to return it. And a couple of souvenirs. This Lego man. And a couple of flags. This is the assembly area. Here is the assembled payload or launch vehicle. Here's the camera, and inside is, uh, inside is the GPS, portable weather station, and a few souvenirs that will touch the edge of space. I've put some reflective tape on uh, to help, that will hopefully help us spot the launch vehicle when it lands. And there's some reflective duct tape inside, which will act as a radar to any passing airplanes. We have a tank of helium, which my dad rented over here. There's about 300 cubic feet of helium in this steel tank, and it's under 2,000 pounds of pressure. So we need a device called a regulator to let the gas out at a safe pace. Here's the regulator. We'll attach this hose here to the regulator and secure it with duct tape, and then place the other end of the hose into the neck of the balloon and fill it. Here is the balloon we'll be using. I've read that while handling the balloon, it is recommended to wear latex gloves to avoid damaging the balloon accidentally. Gloves. To fill the balloon, we'll place this plastic PVC pipe into the neck of the balloon and then uh, tie it off with some zip ties. The tube uh, that will pump the helium in will fit easily into this tubing. Make sure you have a safety line attached to the balloon so it doesn't accidentally get away. It'll probably take an hour, about, about an hour to fill the balloon since the regulator we have here is a small one used for filling party balloons. How much do we fill it? It's hard to measure without extra equipment. So what I've done is weigh the payload. Uh, that's the launch vehicle. Add in the weight of the parachute and the balloon and the flags I'm using as a kite tail. In total it weighs 1,600 grams. Next, I'll fill a jug of water that, that weighs, say, one pound more than the payload. 
I'll tie it to the weather balloon, then keep filling the balloon until it's able to lift the water jug off the ground. Here's the water jug. Then I'll swap the then I'll swap the watering jug for the actual payload, and that should be sufficient to carry it into space. So putting it all together, my project will look something like this. A balloon, a parachute, and a payload. But I never do anything simply. Here is my final project outline. Now, the next thing we need to do is figure out where the balloon will end up. This, of course, depends on the wind and weather, which is constantly changing. Fortunately, a couple of smart people have created some websites that, look, that looks at the current projected weather, asks for your where you currently are, asks how high you expect the balloon to go, and voila, spits out a prediction for the landing zone. Let's start by looking at the weather forecast. Today's weather is fair, with wind coming from the west at five miles per hour. Now let's figure out where the balloon will end up. There are two websites that will help. One is run by the University of Wyoming, the other by the CUSF. I'll use the CUSF, which is located at www.habhub.org. Let's type in our coordinates. 42.9 latitude and negative 71.96 longitude 30,000 meter altitude hit run prediction and you'll see where the expected landing zone is if we launch the balloon here the wind will blow it and it will pop here at 30,000 meters and the, uh, it will land way out here. Now let's look at the weather forecast for the weekend. As you can see, Saturday and Sunday have fair weather with winds blowing east, which should help reduce the westward trajectory of the balloon. So if we go back to the trajectory uh, site and change the date to August 26th and rerun the prediction, Hello, is this the Manchester Air Traffic Control Tower? Hi, my name is Jack Miron. I'll be launching a weather balloon on Saturday, August 26th, around 1 to 2 p.m. from Bedford. I just wanted to give you an advance notice. Yes, it's under four pounds. Okay, great, thanks, bye. One thing I've seen recommended by others is to call the FAA or the local airport 24 hours before you launch your balloon. They will issue an advisory to pilots in the area at that time. Technically, as long as the balloon and the payload weigh less than 4 pounds, you don't need to do this. But it can't hurt. Well, the big day has arrived. Launch time. As you can see, it's a beautiful day. Blue sky, no clouds. Perfect visibility. Winds from the south at two miles per hour. The launching conditions are perfect. Let's just hope we can find and retrieve the balloon, given all these trees. We're partway through the inflation process. 
as you can see, it's a pretty big balloon. So we had to move it over or else it might have hit this car trunk here. Yep, it's working now. We're almost ready to launch the vehicle, uh, the, almost ready to launch the payload. I can already feel it trying to go upwards. We're about to launch our balloon into the atmosphere. And it's going to go 100,000 feet. I'm just attaching some flags to it so you can see it and I think we're ready to launch. We've got the camera here. We've got the box is all set up. Hand warmers inside. And I believe we're ready for takeoff. Okay, count it down, Jack. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one, launch. Up we go. Oh boy! <laughs> there it goes! And I hope it keeps going. I don't see it. Take a picture with the camera. This is Mission Control. It will be the heart of the search and recovery mission. I have an internet hotspot and an iPad, which will allow me to track the GPS position of the weather balloon in real time. We also have a backup onboard computer as a redundancy. This is the recovery vehicle, or as I like to call it, the chase car. We don't know the actual geography of the landing site, so we'll have to make sure we are prepared for anything. As you can see, we've got several essentials. An elevated recovery device, otherwise known as a 32-foot extension ladder, a marine recovery vehicle, my dad's red kayak with life jackets and paddles, mountain recovery equipment, including rock climbing harness and ropes, and various other equipment, saws, extendable pole, grappling hooks. Well, we did it. We launched the balloon successfully, and what a launch. It was awesome. Wow, it took off like a banshee. Unfortunately, the GPS conked out partway through the mission. I was so bummed. There was no way for us to find it. The good news, no, the great news, is that uh, it landed in a neighborhood driveway in downtown Manchester and the homeowner, Sean, found the please call message, and he did. So my mom and I drove to his house to meet him and retrieve it, and give him a reward and a, gig and a gigantic thank you. And so, I present to you two short videos of the photos we took. <laughs> 